Hello and howdy YouTube. I'm Jay and you're watching DS Tech Media. And yeah, it's that time again. We're going to be doing another distro review. And this is going to be the first time that we return to the same distro. And this is for elementary OS version 5.1 Hera. So uh, elementary OS follows the Ubuntu long-term support release cycle typically and it comes out sometime after that. However in this case there's been so many changes and updates to elementary since the uh, last release which was based on Ubuntu 18.04 that they've decided to go ahead and do their first point release. Now I've uh, been a elementary OS user for a few years now. I started with uh, Freya which I believe was the third official release and my last uh, distro review for elementary was for Juno. I personally use elementary on laptops specifically. I really like my workflow with it on the laptop. So let's uh, take a look at what is new in Elementary OS 5.1. And just a note, I was actually able to get 5.1 by doing a uh, full upgrade to Juno, the hardware enablement stack flag. With 5.1, we get uh, the latest hardware support via a new Linux kernel and the newest hardware enablement stack and the first thing you'll notice is they have completely redesigned the login screen it now shows your uh, user your user avatar and your background and if you have additional users they will appear alongside the main user as well but even more important we have a new onboarding and setup guide which is something that really adds to my ability to recommend elementary to a new user And it takes you to the elementary.io site where we can learn the basics. And there's also a link to the support page. And for developers, a link to the get involved page. And it asks you first if you want location services on. We can enable the nightlight feature. We can set up housekeeping to delete automatically the temporary and trashed files. We can browse the app center. And we're ready to go with a link to open system settings. Let's go ahead and do that. And the new uh, first run experience is called greeter so another uh, big feature is they've added official flat pack support via the app center as well as a new side load program for installing non app center applications uh, app center loads a lot faster now they've added additional uh, categories so I guess finance, media production, office, writing and language, I think those are all new. I'm pretty certain universal access is also new. And it also now has offline support so that you can browse through all of your currently cached apps as well as remove apps without being connected to the internet. And App Center's Flatpak support 
means that we can add Flatpak remotes and those apps will appear in Elementary App Center as non-curated applications, just like any of the many Ubuntu applications that are available. App Center is a very key part of Elementary. As you can see above the categories, all of these apps here are official third-party elementary apps developed specifically for elementary and elementary has built a very very strong developer community in its short life with a lot of uh, developers choosing to develop their apps on elementary first they have a lot of good developer resources and they've really streamlined the process basically taking the GNOME development workflow and further specifying it with their color palettes, their GTK styling language, which is called LibGranite, and they stick to the rules of GNOME's Vala programming language. And at the top of every category, are all of the App Center elementary curated apps and they're easy to spot because most of them have either free or a suggested price that the developer has set and it's a part of what makes elementary appealing to developers is they provide a simple infrastructure for developers to allow the users to contribute for the work. And I went ahead and got a flat pack ref just so we could test out the new side loader. And it of course has a warning dialogue. This app solely by its developer and has not been reviewed by secure for security policy or system integration. Download size may be up to 718.8 megabytes updates to this app will not be reviewed other apps from this distributor may appear in app center i understand and this is the green with envy flat pack and it of course does not work because i am running a vm so there's been updates to the Pantheon desktop itself, uh, mainly focused around display and rendering, but as well as changes and updates to the settings dialog and features. Elementary OS comes with its own desktop environment called Pantheon, as well as their own set of pre-installed apps. Pantheon is what really sets elementary OS apart from all the other distributions of Linux. Pantheon comes with its own look, developer APIs, icon theme, color palette, and GTK style sheet. So there's been a lot of major updates around the overall desktop as well as accessibility and settings features. The date and time drop down calendar now also shows events and has been overall improved color wise they have also reworked the entire calendar app and there's a lot of emphasis throughout the desktop on making sure people understand how shortcuts work so the tooltips include the shortcut keys and the calendar app has been just improved in general functionality but the color scheme has also been improved there has also been improvements to the general coloring of 
icons and they've added a bunch of new icons including like symbolic icons and overall rendering improvements. The uh, darker themed apps traditionally used cool dark which has now been switched to a more neutral dark. So this used to have more of a bluish hue to it, kind of like uh, the arc theme. And I honestly prefer the neutral look a lot, a lot better, honestly. A uh, picture in a picture mode now displays at the bottom right by default. And this is actually a feature that I have only ever seen on elementary OS. It's actually pretty neat. So if I need to keep my eye on something from my files window and work on it in another app, I can do that. And as I said before, there's been a lot of focus on the system settings overall. They have reworked the way the sound system, sound devices is displayed. And for system event alerts, they've added the option to flash the screen. And what that does is when there's a particular event, you'll hear the uh, system alert sound, but the screen will flash as well. This is basically an addition for the hearing impaired, but it could be also helpful for people who want an extra level of notification. They've also reworked the mouse and touchscreen dialog. You can switch your primary button, adjust your double click speed, add a long press secondary click, and you can enable middle click paste. You can set it so that you can reveal the pointer by hitting the control key, and you can control the pointer using the keypad. And there is the flash that we were talking about. And that's the revealing for the pointer. Different levels of pointer acceleration. You can manually adjust it. And of course you have all of your touchpad controls. They've added a bunch of uh, functionality to the desktop settings and you can resize your text and all throughout the uh, system there's been improvements to high dpi we can turn on panel translucency and turn window animations on or off we can of course change the dock size this was here before of course hide the dock when maximized overlap focused overlap or when it's not being used there's a pressure reveal. We of course have the hot corners dialog, nothing new there. They have, however, added several new wallpapers. This being one of them. This is one of my wallpapers that I actually designed specifically for elementary. And I believe this is also a new one. Pro tip, if you hit control and right click on the plank dock, you can get a preferences dialog for plank. And this actually lets you switch to different themes. You can change the position. You can change the alignment. And you can even change the icon size don't think I've seen that mentioned very much, but what I'm really here for is this specific docklet, and this adds a show the desktop icon. 
They've also reworked the Bluetooth settings, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that here as this desktop does not have Bluetooth functionality. But they've also reworked the VPN and hotspot settings, although I also do not have a hotspot capability to show you. They've updated the language and regions and you can switch from temperature to Fahrenheit. And they have reworked the power and shutdown settings, most notably adding the prompt to shut down. Uh, this is useful if you have a laptop and you accidentally hit or hold your power key. The system won't just shut down, it will ask before doing so. The integrated search system has been revamped to better include more obscure options in the settings that you may be looking for and that includes through slingshot just about everything in settings can be found through the slingshot now the display dialog has been changed so we now have high dpi scaling and the color palette now matches elementaries and there's a lot more options for the screen rotation and this is where you can also find the nightlight functionality, adjust your temperatures, and set your timing, use manual or sunset to sunrise. So the changes to Hera extend beyond the overall desktop changes, and there have been a lot of changes to the individual apps in very nuanced ways, just to improve the overall performance and experience. The camera app, which I'm unable to properly demonstrate at the moment, now supports more hardware, specifically certain Dell models that it was known to not work with in the past. There have been some slight changes to the music app. It now has an orange coloration to its preferences dialog and they have also made some changes to the way the different views function so that now double clicking on a particular album will automatically start to play and they have added some additional features to working with the playlist adding a never played and overplayed option. There's also been some user experience changes to the videos application. It will now automatically queue up the next episode if you're watching a series. It now displays the full information when playing audio tracks and it now has keyboard navigation so you can scrub through the videos with your keyboard and there is now the ability to create playlists. It's also been updated to show audio track file full names. An example would be ones with different languages and there is now a dedicated button for clearing a playlist. Files has also been updated. Uh, you now have the ability to hide local thumbnails. So if you prefer not to see the thumbnails, you can disable that. And any thumbnail with a transparent background now has a checkerboard instead of just appearing against the white background of the window. There's also been improvements to the discoverability of search. Simply clicking in the path bar will display the search icon. So if I type in arch, we get this drop down dialog. Also, simply hovering over different icons now has the shortcuts tooltip. So throughout the entire uh, OS, you have 
an emphasis on the discoverability of various shortcuts. Pressing the command key brings up the general uh, shortcuts cheat sheet and it has a settings dialog that lets you remap any shortcut the way you see fit. Something that is not yet noticeable in files is the new cloud providers API support, which means that services like Nextcloud will be able to be integrated directly into files without having to do anything special regarding elementary OS. And that is also going to be coming to uh, GNOME files. And as you can see, uh, the new icons look really nice. Uh, they've gone from the blue icon look to the more traditional uh, manila folder style. Some other uh, changes that have been made to files involve the context menu. They've made it more apparent. Uh, where the highlight functions are, so it's uh, easier to click and just select the color highlights for folders, which is a useful feature that I think only Elementary's Pantheon Files app has. With Elementary Code, the file browser dialog can now display uh, hidden files. This is a git branch, and we're able to see the GitHub, Git, and GitIgnore files in the browser. And you can now change branches if you're in a Git repository uh, folder. And there's also been various fixes just regarding overall crashes and things of that nature. Elementary code continues to be one of the more emphasized apps with lots of improvements. And the Pantheon terminal now has a better context menu, copy, paste, select all, find, show and file browser. And they've made improvements to the contrast and color for overall better visibility. And the Pantheon terminal continues to be one of my favorite terminal emulators. And I think that's about it for the major changes to elementary for Hera. I think they've uh, made a lot of moves in the right direction. When I first started using elementary, one of my primary issues with the distro was that even though I really liked the way apps like music and videos and the file manager worked, they had lots of little bugs and things that made it more difficult to recommend elementary for new users. But now we're really seeing their attention to detail being brought to all of their individual apps, which maintaining your own desktop environment is a monumental undertaking, but also having quality and reliability in all of these forked applications and making them your own and taking the responsibility for man maintaining those apps can be very, very difficult undertaking for small teams. And as I mentioned before, I primarily use elementary OS uh, on the laptop. And the main reason for that is the window manager and how it handles virtual desktops. So every Linux distro has virtual desktops, but on a laptop, when you're limited to a single small screen, that's where I think you can get the most use out of them. And with elementary OS, if you simply hold the Windows or Command key and press the down key on your keyboard, you are given the overview of your apps and also the overview of your virtual desktop so to the right we have a empty one and we can mouse drag a window over to the other desktop and you can also drag it down to these little folders as well if we hit command a 
we get a regular, more traditional tiling view. And if we hit left, we can switch desktops. Hitting control and up full screens the application that's selected. And hitting command alt actually allows you to quickly drag the selected window to the next desktop. So that that is one of my favorite things about elementary OS. And I can safely say that this release is a huge improvement. I have nothing but good things to say. The App Center is better than ever. All of the fine tuning for the system settings and even all the different apps is better than ever. So that's my a review of Elementary OS 5.1 Hera, and I look forward to seeing what the guys at Elementary LLC do in the future. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, please let us know why. If you have any questions, comments, would love to hear from you in the comments section. And please subscribe if you like this type of content because I'm always uh, working on more. I want to try and get it to a video a week if I can, but I don't want to sacrifice quality for quantity. So as always, I thank you for watching DS Tech Media, and we'll see you in the next one.